welcome to Staging the Third Act. I'm your host, Janine Escalier-Cato, and this show is about, for, and by boomers, those of us born between the years 1964, no, sorry, 1945 and 1964, and we are, this show is dedicated to the boomers who never had the opportunity to have children, so we pass our legacies on to the universe rather than having children and grandchildren. And this show is a positive way to show how we are creating our legacies. And it's a fascinating way for me as one of those boomers to meet incredible people. So today I have a guest, Rob Schmidt, who is passing his legacy on in a very fun and positive way. And through this fun and positive way, he's reaching many lives. So without further ado, Rob, welcome. Thank you. Welcome to nice Staging to the Third Act. Thanks. So I was so excited about this, this event that you pass on along so many venues and places. And it's fun. And yet, there's kind of a hidden, meaningful result that you get from this program. So just go ahead and start telling It's a byproduct. Because yes. it was all about fun and then it became something else and the more I did them the more I realized wow this this has an effect that I didn't originally anticipate and that's that people look forward to it as an opportunity to get together and reminisce and it takes them out of isolation and during uh, Excuse COVID. me, we didn't even sure. say what the event was. Oh, they're called Boomer <laughs> Dance Parties. Boomer Dance Parties. Yes. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, COVID had people isolated and on their computers and social media, but it's not the same as being around other people and talking and laughing. And so that's, that's a big part of these Boomer Dance Parties. Well, are. how did these Boomer Dance Parties start? How did you start this whole... Well, that's, that's a... That's an episode in itself. Uh, my wife and I put on a New Year's Eve party for an Elks Lodge in Alameda. And I had a live band hired. And in between the live band sets, I played some what I call early to mid boomer music that was classic stuff for the older people that were there, Andy Williams, uh, Al Martino, Nat King Cole, Little Sinatra, McGuire Sisters, Joe Stafford, Patty Page. And the dance floor was filled between band sets with older people. And I thought, hmm. After that event ended, on the way out, that crowd, the, the older crowd, the boomers, were coming up to thank me for the music that we had played in between the band. and. So that's when I started thinking about, huh, I'd like to do more of these. I'd done some DJ work at the marinas and yacht clubs around Alameda. But when I started doing uh, senior centers, oh, it, it oh, really took off. And, uh, and those were between 1 and 4.30. It's kind of an unusual time sure. because I was used to being in bars where you load in at five, you load out at one o'clock, and the bars close. So this was really nice because it was all about enjoying the music and company, and not so much about, you know, Drinking. throwing them back. Sure. Yeah. Um, and people would come up and say, "I, I'm from the Emeryville Senior Center. Could you do one of these there?" Why, sure. And then it took off from there. Emeryville, El Cerrito, Richmond, wow. downtown Oakland, uh, and then a place called the Allegro Ballroom, which is a nonprofit where they have a big dance floor and they teach uh, everything from salsa to waltz to cha cha, you name it, they teach it there. And one of their people asked me to come and do an event, and it, would, it was really a little scary because it was a different age group. But the younger people just love the music. The older people really love the music. And, and that is, uh, that's an essential part of the dance parties, is that everybody gets up to dance to uh, the Cool Jerks or Chubby <laughs> Checker. But the people that were doing that, that were alive and in high school or college in the 60s, it's something special for them because yeah. 
they remember doing it the first time. So they really appreciate the music. Well, I, I, <coughs> I'm sure in the memory care homes, you probably spark memories in people that they hadn't remembered in a long yeah. time. Yes. Talk a little bit about that. Every, every time I do one, uh, there are certain songs that are so emblematic, they're so powerful, but nobody hears them anymore because all these music on the radios, 80s and 90s. Right. So music from 50, 60 years ago, they don't, they, play. Don't, they don't hear it anymore. So when they hear something, you honestly, you would see people go, oh, I remember that. And uh, certain songs are just, they, I don't know, they push a button and they just resonate in a way that the modern stuff, I, I was at an event at the pool uh, and they had DJ playing, you know, couldn't, what I call ambient music. It, it's bouncy, it's songs from the 90s with a percussion track, a rhythm track overlaid on it, mm -hmm. so it's, it's bouncier. And it was great, but I didn't, I didn't have that feeling that people are going, oh, yes. that song, oh. Or maybe for young couples bef when they had to say goodbye to somebody going to yes. Vietnam. Yes. And that or was going the last off to college song. And they would never see them again. And that was the last song they had together. Yeah. Or, you know, the song that they had at their wedding. Or yes. Yeah. Yes. So. And can I read the list you sent me in the sure. mail? Um, some of the songs that I had forgotten. Of course I was this is a little before my time. Okay. But because you and I are around the same age and we didn't grow I remember as a little girl hearing them on the radio, but you know, Jackie Wilson, Bobby Darren, Dee Dee Sharp, The Contours, Righteous Brothers, Ray Charles, Sam Cooke, and it goes on and on and on. The Capitals, Chubby Checker, Jerry and the Pacemakers, Junior Walker and the All-Stars, um, Chuck Berry, Neil Sedaka. I mean, these are from the 1963 or and well, late 50s to yeah, 50s late to 60s. the early 60s. Now you you may if you're my age. And so some of this music was a little before we started socializing and, you know, dancing with members of the opposite camp right. at a high school dance. Right. But we grew up listening to that on the AM radio. Yes. While yes. Driving around with my, our parents. I remember all this. My mom songs. would start singing along with Jackie Wilson or, or or Connie Francis, and of course I'd be horrified. But now when I hear that, it's like. I was a little girl in front, I was in front of my dresser with this oval mirror to, all, to Chuck Berry and I'm dancing and doing the guitar and I was pre-pubescent pre and right. I was yeah. dancing to all these songs in front of the mirror right. and I had my little, tra little radio, you know, turning it up and in my room and this is before, you know, my time even yeah. that I remember all these songs. And me too and I love the older stuff and a lot of it is really dance music and the the age group baby boomers is actually made up of what I've discovered is three components early boomer mid boomer yeah. and late boomer late boomer even moved into the, the disco era and the middle Absolutely. boomers British invasion soul R&B and folk yes. and then the earlier ones were uh, a, a Somebody singing with a backup band. Yes. Uh, like Mel Torme or uh, Connie Francis. Yes. Where they didn't, you didn't think of him as a group. No. You thought of him as a vocalist, and they had backup music. But it was great dance music. And in the early '60s, the thing that took off was non-partner dancing. So you could do the twist, yeah. or the monkey, or the jerk, <laughs> or the hully gully. You didn't need a partner, and that's really helpful at these dance parties because the ratio of, of couples to singles is really skewed. Also, I want to point out before we, I forget to ask you, these events, by the way, are free. You put these on for free. So you go to these places and ask if you can do it. You br now tell the viewers what you bring to these events, like physical things to make them happen. Oh! What do you bring they, so that it's a full experience? They were, uh, I took my cue from American, Band, uh, American Bandstand 
And if you watch old American Bandstand, you see Dick Clark uh, introducing people who are going to be in a dance contest, or they'd have a little trivia contest, or they might even have a live band come and play a song. Right. And then I was, in an earlier career, a high school teacher and the senior class advisor. And so I went to these proms and balls, and I noticed they would always have a photo place where you could <laughs> take a picture of yourself or your friends with you know, beneath the sea or something <laughs> like that. So uh, my wife and I just took these banners that showed, it might have been a holiday thing, it might have been a disco ball and lots of records. And, and we would put uh, letters on it that said, Boomer Dance Party, this location, and then the theme, which could have been Beach Blanket Bongo, <laughs> Beach music, and, and then the date. And I had no idea it was going to take off, but I'm over here DJing, and I would look and see a line of people waiting to have their pictures taken. Aww. I love that. And then these contests where we would have a dance contest, the essential dances, the twist, the mashed potato, and we would pick a few and I would pick somebody to be a judge and it's not very scientific at all. And, uh, and then we would give trophies that were made from bowling trophies, fishing cool. derby trophies, and I would have these plates made that said what the event was first, second, third, but, and they really loved Getting That's these trophies, really and then cute. they would go over to the banner, and they would have their picture taken in front of the banner, and then uh, the trivia contest. Uh, what's the next lyric in this song? Oh, that's great. And or what TV show is this the theme from? And so that has taken some tuning over the time because um, I remember this stuff because I'm in it all the time. Right. But when somebody hears the theme to Perry Mason. <laughs> they remember the guy, they remember a show, you just can't remember the name of the... 77 know, yeah, Sunset Strip. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, I don't even so know why that came in my head. <laughs> they, you, but it's the kind of thing where you would see two people with their hand on a button, ready to hit that button, trying to, what is that song or what is that TV show? So I've, I've kind of made it a little less obscure, less tricky. Yeah. So it's not like Jeopardy, right. where you have to really <laughs> know. Uh, um, so a, a song like bum 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 <laughs> Mr. Sandman! Yes, exactly! <laughs> Everybody gets that, and the entire audience sings it at the same time. Or uh, uh, the lollipop song. Lollipop, lollipop. Oh, no. Bum 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 bum. Uh, and everybody is doing that. And so uh, it's the people that are not up dancing are talking to the person next to them, oh my God, that was my favorite song. I, I played that 45 until it had no grooves left in it. Wow. And that is a real treat for me to see wow. that going on. That's great. So it's, it's a treat. It's a treat doing it. And I'm just getting started because there are things that I want to do here that where I see an opportunity. Uh, I work with the line dance instructor at the senior center. She had an enormous following. She had 60 people in the room twice a week for an hour and a half. And so I would ask her, What's, what songs are you working on right now? Here are the songs that I'm doing. Do any of these work for you? And I will do a song that features your line dancers who love to get up because they practice, 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 but they don't get to perform really. Yeah. So that brought all the line dancers over. They were really enthusiastic fans. And then there is a group uh, here at, uh, at Esplanade that is called Music Buffs, and they're people who play instruments. And I went to see them on Monday and they've got a bass player and a guitar player and a couple of keyboards and a guy on drums and I thought, American Bandstand, our featured artist, and are they, have them. Are they for doing I'm, this with you? I'm gonna 
talk them into doing it that because would be great. that way they don't have to do a full evening set, which is a lot of work. It's yeah. a lot of practice. Pick your three best songs that are consistent with the boomer dance party thing, and I'll put it into in between a set of dance music. Oh, that's cool. So now you've got this this big event that I hope people look forward to, and that's what these are all about. I learned how to market my events because uh, oh, that's the, the senior centers don't only have the staff for marketing. So they'll put something on their website. That. And so I would give them the essential information. And this is the catch right here. This is what draws them in. And I put it near the entrance. And each one is you know, kind of geared towards a specific location. And like, like this is an early one, and it says no pledge breaks, positively no chaperones, only the best dance music. Is this is dance music? Yeah. This is not listening and singing along with the radio music. Right. And so I really emphasize the dance part of it. I like these brochures too. Boomer Dance Party brochures. These are nice. I also use little table tents because I've learned that if you put uh, those uh, four up, four by six little postcard type things all over the place, people don't see them. Yeah. But if you have a table tent that stands up and looks at them, they see that. And it's got the message on both sides. So people on that side of the table and this side, and then they would just pocket them, which is exactly what I want. Yeah. So. Uh, there was a big marketing component that included 30 second video clips of people dancing from a, a movie or a TV show. Could have been Fred Astaire dancing to a Led Zeppelin tune or something. And don't forget, coming up, Boomer Dance Party, this date, this time, see you there. Just long enough and small enough so that people could get it on their phone without having to, you know, wait for it to download. It was just, it was a teaser. Let me ask you a question. You seem so enthusiastic about this, and which is exciting. I mean, this, is, I think your enthusiasm makes this whole program. And your love of making people happy makes this whole program. What do you get out of it? I... That's a really good question because I don't make any money and I actually spend money out of my own pocket to Sure, have done. that's a lot of and, uh, overhead. And then I you know, print out the playlist to distribute to people at these events. And I, there's something about somebody coming up and saying, I love that song. I haven't heard Stranger on the Shore since the early 60s. I'd forgotten all about it. Thank you for you know, playing that for me. And I just you know, feel like I've done a really good thing. I think because you were a teacher and you've always been in a, in a profession that is giving, as, as, a, as was I, I was a teacher for 36 years, I think that we thrive on that connection with people. Yeah, I think that's true. And we just, we thrive on, you know, the give and take of, of, of connecting and making a difference in people's lives. Yeah. And I think this is like an immediate thing where you don't have to be in a classroom and wait for the children to grow up and wait for them to get the aha moments right. and wait for them to come back years later right. and say, you know, you were right, I finally get it. You get the immediacy of having people go, oh, I, I had forgotten about that yeah. moment. Yes, and you can see it. You can see people going to that place. Oh, yeah. And it's evolving. Right. Um, I'm adding new things. I, I put these little trivia contests in. And it's fun. If you, yeah, if you can tell me who is performing this song, it's not who you think. You will win this shiny penny <laughs> that was just minted uh, last month. And, you know, it's a silly prize, but it's a prize. Yeah. And so people listen, and I have a, a recording of Bobby Darren's I love Bobby Beyond Darren. the Sea. I love Bobby Darren. Done Darin. by Kevin Spacey, note for note. Oh, he was, he was good in that role. And people, they, ooh, that's, that's Bobby Darren. 
It's not Bobby Darren. Oh, <laughs> I, I have a Tom Jones song where he covers something that Sam and Dave did. I love Sam and, and Dave. Oh my gosh. Uh, and no one, no one gets it. Um, I have a, a song that's a Smokey Robinson song done by Huey Lewis. Uh, I, ordinarily, I don't play updated versions, but this is Huey Lewis and Gwyneth Paltrow singing Cruisin'. No one really, that's far enough back there that nobody quite knows that Gwyneth Paltrow could sing. And, yeah, I and didn't know that. And a lot of people have kind of <laughs> forgotten about it, Huey Lewis. So when they hear this, it's like, oh, that's Smokey Robinson. No, it isn't. Oh, I just, such a kick out of people, you know, wait, 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 oh, isn't that, and you can just see them talking to each other, and it's just a hoot. That's really great. Yeah. That's, that's, and, and to me, you know, when I first set up the time we met, I thought, what are we going to do with this for a half hour? And I met you and I went, oh my God, I get it. This is such a labor of love. It is. And it you're, really is. you know, for, and I, I just got excited hearing about it because of your enthusiasm. And now I want you to do, uh, I wanted you to do this for my husband's birthday. Um, since you. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, it just, it'll be a treat. Because I can tell it's going to be, you know, just the music that you do and just your, you know, having prizes and, and using old trophies. Yeah. I mean, yeah. how fun is that? It's kind of like the event <laughs> is a box. How many things can you put in the box and fill the box up so we're not just going to have music. We're going to have music. We're going to have this backdrop banner. We're going to have trophies. We're going to have contests. What else can People we do? People love that. And uh, so I might uh, add some additional that. things to it. Um, and then I, I've developed this set of boomer jokes that only boomers appreciate. <laughs> I like uh, that. And, uh, and, and, and I can't tell you what they are. They're like, they're like one-off, one-liner type jokes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's. Uh, and I, I, I truly believe that if you're passionate about what you do, everybody else becomes passionate about it. Yes. I mean, yes. It's just, yeah. it's contagious. Uh, my wife and I try to have the best time of anyone in the room. So we kind of, if people are kind of nervous about it, they've come along, they won't feel alone they'll they'll feel part of oh something. yes and, uh, do you start, start the dances do you and your wife start the dances uh if you kick things off it's a little sometimes they're a little reluctant then i send my wife who is my secret weapon out and it's like don't let my wife make eye contact with you because she'll pull you up and make you dance <laughs> and she you know starts just dancing and then People get up and start dancing with it because it's it's safe. Yeah, you're surrounded by people that are you know over 50, so you're not competing with younger people yes. on the dance floor and or professional dancers. Everybody's an amateur having a great time. Yes, and there's a lot of people in our community who love to dance. At every event, the same people are out there in the middle of the floor, just right. you know, cutting the rug, right. and they're good. Those people are at every event, every location I go to, and I love them. But I want, I want to get the people who might not have gotten up to dance. Right. When they get up, and once they get a feel for it, they don't sit down. And so that's why I had to put these breaks in, because once people get up and start dancing to a solid list of really dance my music, they would get tuckered out and then they would have to go home because I'm, I'm beat. I, just, yeah. I dance the nine songs in a row, I'm done. So I, I, I really have tuned and tweaked this event so that it's a good time for a solid two and a half, three hours. Can you recall maybe one of your most poignant moments with the music and how it affected somebody? There have been an, a few of those moments where somebody... Where it brought tears to your eyes. Oh, yeah, that's people who come up and say, that was, that was my husband and I, that was our favorite song. And you know, he passed a few years ago. I get a, a great deal of that. 
and, and that's why I created this list because people would say, oh, you played our, our favorite song. Which one was that? Oh, they don't know the name anymore. They don't know the artist. Oh. It's been that long. So you give these lists out? Yes. Oh, that's I, great. I print out the list. It's kind of a starting point, so I add things and take things out. But I let people know it's available. I put it on the tables. And at, at the end of the event, they're all gone. Wow. So they've all been taken. Love it. Love wow. it. There, people say, well, you know, you can use Spotify, you can use, uh, you know, Sirius. AI uh, never attended to dance. AI never Good had point. its arms around Good the person point. that had a crush on. It knows what people are downloading. It knows Good point. genres, but it doesn't know the, the really hot it doesn't know a really danceable song. It just knows what was popular and downloaded. So that's my secret power, superpower. You're, you're connecting people to their pasts. Yeah. And you're connecting people to what was important at a certain time in their life, which AI can't do. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, so I have a friend who has a service, and she had it set for 60s. Uh, 60s dance music, and it played a song by the Monkees. Uh, the Monkees were entertaining, but they're not a dance band. No. It's like the Beatles were originally a dance band. They right. played Roll Over Beethoven. They they played uh, Johnny they were a Be Good. Skiffle band. Yes, in these bars where it was all about dancing. Yes. Then later on, they became the Beatles. Yeah, uh, but. That's that period of time in the early 60s where teenage you know, youth music took off, combined with AM radio, and then Ed Sullivan, Hollywood Palace, and then it, it went even further going towards that, that youth demographic. Lloyd Thaxton. I loved him. Shindig. Loved that. Hullabaloo. Loved it. Hollywood a go go. Loved it and all. And then later on, Soul Train. Ah, man. Every Saturday I had to watch yes, it. Yes, yes. And so that's that's what I try to. Create I hate to I hate to interrupt, but we only have a few minutes left. So if you would like to tell the viewers how they can get in touch with you, if they want to plan a party with you, sure. this is your time to to give any of your social media info. Okay, well, uh, I have a website, uh, boomerdanceparty.com. If you go to the website, you will see pictures of all the different events that I've done. Uh, so it'll give you a feel for what the room looks like. Um, you'll see the playlist. I actually put a, a combination of fast songs and slow songs that I, I tend to draw from. Uh, and then different things that are available theme-wise, like uh, uh, Beach Blanket Bongo, the music of the Beach Boys, and Ronnie and the Daytonas. And when you're in a room with 120 people all singing, wah, 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 you know, you've, you've reached, you've resonated with people. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, I have all the lights in the world for a disco type event. Um, then there's you a, have the, the, the mirror ball and oh yes the flashing lights yes and, and then uh, uh, a theme I call attack of the 50 foot prom date which is kind of like a prom so I'd like people to show up in blue powder blue tuxedos <laughs> or prom with the ruffle shirt yes yes <laughs> and then I, I have these sashes that say prom king and prom and we will select someone to be the prom king and <laughs> plastic tiaras. Oh man, it's so much fun. Um, so there's a lot of uh, things that, um, I'm trying to think of the name of that, the, the event where it's, everything is women's choice. Uh, Sadie? Sadie Hawkins. Sadie Hawkins. It's, you know, women take over the dance floor and they will dance with whoever they want to and you know, you can have a lot of fun with that. So, um, yeah, boomerdanceparty.com, um, the parties, the music, the gallery. Uh, there's a blog there where I, I identify the worst song 
ever recorded by Dion and the Belmonts. It's so bad, it's horrible. And and they have kazoos in it. Any song with kazoos instead of guitars, you know you're you're dealing with a stinker. Or the songs that I call uh, the last dance. These are the dance where it, it, the dance floor is just about empty. It's a darkened room. There may be only one or two people out there, uh, couples. But these these songs are will bring a tear to your eye. Like the Righteous Brothers, what's the Oh, there's, there's a few. Unchained there's, Melody. There's one that I, I will not play because it's, uh, Chris Christopherson passed away this week I at know. 88. He wrote a song called For the Good Times that is heartbreaking, it's absolutely heartbreaking. It's sung by Ray Price who did a great job. It's got some strings in it. It's got Ray Price's voice. It's just a beautiful song. And people don't realize how many great songs that Chris Christie. He's like a Carol King. She wrote everything. She did. So she did. I could have an event that was just Carol King. Uh, that song, Locomotion, recorded by oh, Little I love Ava. That song. Uh, Ava Boyd was Carol King's babysitter. Wow, little Eva. Little Eva. Yes. So <laughs> when you put on the locomotion, everybody knows what the locomotion is all about, <laughs> and um, you know it's, it's probably on this list here somewhere. Anyway, I have to wrap it up, and I don't want to, but it's been such a pleasure having you, and you have to get in on this dance boomer dance party. So please. Yes. Contact Rob and he will get you going. Don't miss it. We will. No chaperones, uh, no pledge breaks, just great dance music. So, thank you again for tuning in to Staging the Third Act with Janine Escalercato. I'll see you the next time.